So I'll be quick, and I'll just say that um, I am um, like Paige, a social scientist, and um, like Paige, interested in questions of environmental justice and policy and how those two things intersect with the kinds of conservation ecology that many of you do. I have been fascinated by questions around the whether distributive justice as a concept can be quantified and spatialized in ways that don't reduce its complexity. And so that's been something I did early in my career by working on wildlife management in the Central African Republic and looking at the distribution of risk in the forests of the CAR and of benefits from conservation, i.e. who in those communities was making money from the introduction of ecotourism and conservation and who was not and why, and who had more access to the forests and who did not and why. Um, that landscape, as you can see from this photograph of me doing field work, is riverine. It's highly well watered. The entire Congo Basin is a very, it's an amazing repository of fresh water, not unlike the Great Lakes, in fact, if you think planetarily. So I've gotten more and more interested in both wildlife and water within these forest environments, and that's brought my gaze more to North America and even as far abroad as China in recent years, and I've been thinking more and more about the roles of gender and poverty and identity in distributive justice around wildlife, green space, and water. So that's the gist of my sites, the systems where I work, and the questions I'm asking. Um, these photographs represent recent work in China, some recent work on Flint here in Michigan, and the Central African fronts on which I continue to work with colleagues. Methods that we use in our work range from basic st descriptive statistics, looking at the abundance of animals and humans and the ecosystems where we work, or even thinking a little bit about the relationships between those things, but also to um, thinking about how the changes of valuation of animals over time, the, the value of ivory, for example, or of water now, change the politics of who uses space how. And I'm really intrigued by those questions. Right now, I'm learning a lot about combining ethnographic methods like semi-structured interviewing and social mapping and archival and media, digital media research with work on technology uptake and water quality monitoring. And I'm doing that with teams of engineers with whom I work, including Lutgard Raskin, Nancy Love, and Aline Kotel, people with whom I'm working, Lut in Africa, Nancy in North America, Aline um, in the China project. So I'm really um, eager to tell any of you who is interested more about that, but it all makes the most sense when it comes into teaching our students how to be better collaborators and think about how these methods combine and how they need to be open to one another's knowledge forms in the politics of collaborative teams. That can happen through field teaching and through classroom teaching. It can also happen through the development of cases in which a real life problem is used to explain how collaboration is necessary and how it is challenging. On that front, my last slide just talks about a last distributive justice front that fascinates me more and more as I grow older as an academic, and that's the distribution of our knowledge itself. The open access platform for GALA, on which we are beginning to see more and more cases uploaded by you, our faculty. In fact, this list, Karen, my god, the cases she's uploading right now, Bill Curry's working on case-based teaching in his class, Sheila Schuler has done one. Catherine, uh, Inez, Kathleen, all people with whom I'm having conversations about cases they've taught and how those might be um, more accessible both within our classrooms and in community-based situations. So you'll see posters about that outside. And please know that as I work on those questions, documenting the impact of cases in and outside of classrooms, the innovation, the digital innovation that makes that possible, and the inclusivity, how to make STEM and sustainability fields more representative of the world we live in, with more kinds of participants. These are the frontiers towards which my research is evolving. I want to thank you all for your attention at the end of a long session.